Shalom, people. All praises to the Most High God, Yahuwah, known as Jesus Christ, or God. What's up, guys? It's Tristan, and I am back again with another semen retention update. It is the big 10 times 2, day 20 of semen retention and of the hygiene challenge. If you guys are new, I am on day 40, technically. I started this challenge about 20 days in, or yeah, I started the challenge 20 days in on semen retention. So whatever day I'm on, just know that it is doubled and then, yeah. But uh, yeah, guys, I feel good. That's pretty much the, the gist of every video is I feel great on this. Um, as far as what mode I am on, I am on monk mode, which is essentially just celibacy. And yeah, so it really ties in along to the Bible. I didn't know that starting this, but now that I know that, um, it's actually quite amazing how the Most High like set me up to the point to where I could just follow the Bible wholeheartedly and effortlessly. Um, as far as adultery and lust go, I'm still kind of struggling with those mentally. Like, uh, not really in terms of the sense of on the streets, just looking at women and like, damn, I want to smash that. Like, not really. Like, I never find myself like that on the every day-to-day -day basis of physical life. But on the internet, man, especially Twitter, Instagram, I have to be so careful because there are so many spiritual traps on this World Wide Web and you can be caught up in the web. Um, I'm assuming sin is the spider, if that's the reference. But uh, yeah, it's quite crazy how much uh, seductive, provocative, you know, sexy stuff is on the internet. And I, I understand that, like, I understand um, I should honestly just delete social media because of that reason. But that would show weak character. And I mean, it would be a good precautionary step to, you know, help myself stray away from mental adultery. But in all honesty, if I see it real quick and take it away and don't dwell on it mentally then I should be okay. But when it really hits me is at night. Like, I don't look at stuff on the internet to do the adultery in the mind. I reminisce on old girlfriends is what I'm finding. So my mind is extremely sexual right now. Like, my mind is looking for any source of sexual dopamine that it can find. And me replaying, you know, how I used to beat guts in is like the closest thing to porn that it can find up here. And I think that'll go away with time. Uh, the brothers called it uh, youthful lust. So like when you're born again, um, you really deal with a lot of spiritual attack on your vulnerabilities to the commandments. And my biggest one is probably iniquity and lust. Uh, the iniquity part has spanned from my childhood. Uh, my childhood was, I don't want to say it was bad. Like it, it, it's explained to me why it was the way it was because of Deuteronomy, the curses. So it's not that bad. It was literally necessary to get me to this point that I am now. Um, so that my children will not have to go through that. But anyways, childhood was pretty bad. I wanted to change my situation so much, but always felt helpless, and I would blame God for my situation. It really wasn't his fault, it was my forefather's fault, and being a young child, you can never really truly understand the plan of the Most High. I mean, most grown men don't even truly understand the plans of the Most High. Um, my true understanding is just that like I said in the last video towards the end, this is a big video game. All other nations are NPCs just like set as obstacles to stop you from like finding out who you truly are. And if the video game had a name, it'd be called Israel. And the goal is to just find out who you are, inherit the kingdom, live forever.
Pretty simple, but you know, when you're born in the midst of other nations, they will teach you everything in their power to get you to not realize who you are. But like I was saying about my childhood, I wanted to become God to fix my situation. And that was my biggest dream up until I started like watching Michael Jackson. And for those of you who don't know, I like I said, I was raised by lesbians my whole life. So my only role, my only male role model was that man. And we all know how feminine Michael Jackson is. So it's kind of short of a miracle. Like I keep saying that I never turned gay. Like the acceptance factor from the society that I live in of homosexuality is super high. And like, man, I knew that stuff was wrong since I was young. Knew it was wrong. Never wanted to tell people it's wrong. I never wanted to act out of like, never wanted to force anyone to not be gay. But I was always accepting of it, which is still pretty bad. But, you know, I don't like hurting people or bringing mental or physical pain on anyone. And if, like, for some reason, I always knew that there was always a reason that they were the way they are. You're, you're, not, you're not born gay. There's always something that happened. And if you can deduce it down to that and find out what happened to you to make you go down that path... I think you would realize that it's pretty much a demonic force that's plaguing your soul. But that's a bunch of my thoughts on that and a bunch of preconceived notions from my childhood. And like, like I loved my mom and I knew she was lesbian. So like the me caring for my mother was allowing her to do that. And when I say allow, I don't mean like I could stop her at any moment. I'm just like not going to bring up scripture that's like, you know, this is wrong, right? And then, of course, like any other people that you're told wrong when it's your lifestyle, you will defend it till the day you die more, more than likely. But yeah, I wanted to be God to change my circumstances. Her girlfriends were beating the shit out of me all the time I thought God would n like it was all his fault and for him to create a world like this was unacceptable in my mind so I wanted to be God and maybe that kind of spans from like uh, due to some LSD trips I thought I was the Antichrist because in scripture it said he would look like a sheep and speak like a serpent so like throughout my whole upbringing, I thought I was that, which I am not. I think the Antichrist will be a white woman. Um, some thoughts on that is like the counterpart to God's masculine would have to be feminine, right? Um, the counterpart to to the good would be... Okay, let's just stop right there. I don't want to go into occult themes and stuff like that. It's just the masculine most high God. He is the head of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the head of man. And man is the head of woman. And then so on and so forth. Woman over children and children listen to all of them above them. That's how it should work. But you know, most of us are in single parent households. Or in my case, I was raised by Esau and Edom my whole life, so I love white people. I know that it's not their fault. Like I said, like they're just doing what they can and what they want to because they don't have any laws. Like the Bible is not for them. Like they don't have to follow the Ten Commandments. So you can't be mad at a certain set of people that was placed here to literally punish you to get you back to come to get you back to come to the most high. That is all the NPCs are here for, is to direct you back upward. Um, Yeah, man, I get really like lost in these tangents and things and they should correlate. But like I was saying, my biggest sins are iniquity and iniquity and lust, lust, yes. Um, 
I really don't know why. Like, I just, everything about women is, like, I'm on that point of semen retention where I can hear a feminine voice and get chills. Like, I don't even know what the, f what does that even mean? Like, why am I so attracted to you beings? <sighs> it's in our nature as men to love women. Like, I don't know where it comes from. I don't know why I have it so strong, but this may seem weird, but like whenever my mom would bring girlfriends over, I would never be like, ew, disgusting lesbian stuff. I'd be like, that's kind of hot. Like not saying my mom having sex with a woman is hot in my mind. I was just like kind of a bro when I was younger. I was like, yeah, lesbian shit. That's sexy. But like, it's unholy. I don't fucks with it. But if I had two wives and they were doing some nasty shit in front of me, I'd be pretty hot. But <laughs> let's get off of this topic. I need to defeat the mental lust. There's no reason for me to quote unquote, just look at like my old memories and reminisce about like what like I was saying, like I used to have like so many girlfriends that would just do like the nastiest stuff. And it's not even that nasty. I was never into like weird stuff. It was just like, I would think about, man, Ashlyn was so fire and doggy style. I'd be like, damn, Jessa would, was sucking my dick so good that day. Or man, Ashley had like her hands behind her back while I was digging her out. And I'm just like, bro, why are we reminiscing on this? Come on, like, come on. We got to think about the most high. And I check my fringes every time I have these thoughts because that's what they're there for. They're there to remind us about the commandments. Uh, low key want to go to like a pharmacy or something and get like a blue Sharpie just to, you see that part, the little, like that big part on it like I could color that blue I'm just trying to make do with what I have and follow the most high God in the best way that I can I'm sharing this information to hopefully get you guys on the right track if you are an Israelite heck even if you're Esau or Edom or a Gentile or anything like that you can follow the laws they said that they would even do our laws to try to recom recompense for the sins of their forefathers. And that makes sense. It really makes sense. It really does. Like you go ahead, do it. You don't have to. It's not in your nature to follow the laws. I mean, heck, the Israelites, it's in our nature to rebel against the laws. So do whatever you want to, but I recommend the blacks, Native Americans and Hispanics, a uh, tribe of Gad, Benjamin, you know, the island African or Negroes, uh, just wake up, bro. It's all it's about. It's why I'm here. I'm here to tell you to grow out your beard, keep the fringes on and stray away from adultery and keep marriage holy because marriage is like the basis of the Bible because it's the rebuilding of the nation of Israel between two people coming together, forming a nation. I want a wife so bad. I want a woman that truly, truly believes in the most high. I don't want a situation where I have to turn a sister from her indoctrination into society. Like it was already hard enough to make myself like get out of that. And now I'm in the presence of the most high God spirit. So I can't even imagine trying to like get a woman to not believe what she believes like it's already hard enough like arguing with women about like small stupid things like I was always the brother that would just drop the whole situation and not even talk like it's the best thing you can do but women hate that they want some back and forth because it shows that you have like a backbone and know what the heck you're talking about but I was just the brother that did not care what she was saying and I would just stop talking. I would always isolate myself. And now I know that 
I kind of have to, you know, stay firm in my beliefs. But anyways, these are some random thoughts, biblical thoughts, occultic thoughts. Uh, me being the antichrist, uh, raised in two mothers, never been raised by a man my whole life. I don't think I'm the antichrist anymore. I think that's just a spirit that was placed on me through LSD, the love, sex, drug, or Luciferian service doctrine. But, uh, yeah. Thank you for listening. If you got this far, I will see you guys in day 21. And uh, keep your face clean, get lean, grow your beard, and be a God-worshipping machine. Not saying it, not throwing up the hand gesture. Have a good day, and shalom.